357 Magnum versus 40 Smith & Wesson. What I have today is some Buffalo Barnes lead-free ammo. Now, the reason why I'm doing this comparison, it's interesting here. Both of these are 125 grain bullets. So even though this is 40, 40 diameter, this is about 35 diameter. You know, both are 125 grain and both are in similar power levels. This is rated at 1383 feet per second from a four inch barrel, even though the box says something like 1225, they're talking a snub nose because this is kind of a lower end load. Now with our 40, it's rated about 1420 feet per second from a custom, I think it said Caspian 1911, something like that. So very close in overall rated velocity and power. Our barrel travel in this five inch M&P is about the same for that bullet as our four inch Smith & Wesson 686. So overall, it should be a pretty fair, interesting test. So we're gonna go through the chronograph, see what kind of velocity and accuracy we can get at the same time. And then I'm gonna do my 10% clear ballistic test which contains four layers of denim followed by three inches clear ballistics to represent hitting a pectoral muscle followed by a quarter inch MDF to represent hitting ribs or sternum and to more clear ballistics. We'll do a shot with this and without it to represent hitting a chest shot versus a gut shot without it. And then I'm going to shoot from 25 yards at my full size steel silhouette, see what kind of overall practical accuracy I can get. So let's get started with this test. All right, first up, we have our 40 Smith and Wesson. We'll see how close we get to that 1420 feet per second they list on that 1911. So. 40 Smith & Wesson, let's see what we get, 1389, pulled that one, 1401, pulled that one again, 1394, I'll read, 1374, I'm pulling a little bit to the left for some reason. 1376. I'll take those numbers a little bit below rated velocity. Let's see how our 357 mag low recoil flash compares. All right, 357 mag. Let's see how close we get to that 1383 feet per second. They were listing through a four inch. They listed a four inch Smith & Wesson mountain gun. So that should be pretty close to my 686. because I think that's also a 686. So let's see how close we get to 1383. 1400, 1363, hold that one, 1380, 1402, 1364, that was weird, a little bit of a issue hanging up on my trigger, I think that might have been a primer coming out, it ain't my gun. All right, let's hit our ballistics shell blocks, see what we can get with these rounds. All right, first up, we got our 40 Smith & Wesson through four layers of denim, three inches to clear ballistics, a quarter inch MTF, and two more clear ballistics. Let's see how it does. All right. All right, through our MDF, what we have is absolutely massive. That is a total indication that within that first three inches, it was massively expanding. And our penetration would also indicate that because we're only at about eight and a half inches. So we'll do a shot without the MDF, just our gut shot with our plain clear ballistics and see how it compares. All right, no MDF, just our gut shot. The R40 does now. <laughs> and not a whole lot better. I mean better, but not a whole lot. Uh, so let's line this back up here. What we're looking at is a total damage path of Ten and three quarters, so definitely under penetrated, and that makes a lot of sense. Why, you know, forty diameter at only one twenty-five grain at such a high velocity brings your, you know, your sexual density way down, makes it won't penetrate very, very well. So, let's see how our three fifty-seven does. It should penetrate a little bit better. All right, three fifty-seven mag through our MDF. Let's see how it does. <laughs> 
Alright, our 357 finished off this uh, MDF here. I believe I hit here. But the shock just busted the rest of that out. And what we're looking at here is a lot of MDF brought into here. A lot of damage. And we're looking at about 13 and a half inches penetration. Let's leave it out for our quote unquote gut shot, see how it compares. All right, now MDF just started gut shot. See what we got with our 357 mag. All right. And that is very interesting. So I'm guessing that the MDF pulled the pedals back a little bit more and no MDF, it just you know pretty much expanded straight out. So what we're looking at here is 12, 11 and three quarters. So even though it's a little bit below what you want, you know, my gut feeling says <laughs> with the gut shot here, that's probably enough. That's probably enough. Especially if you hit something hard, like a chest shot, it's gonna peel those pedals back possibly. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but it seems like overall it did pretty well. And 125 grain for, for this is a pretty good weight. So let's shift from that 25 yards, see what we get with these rounds. I know I said 25 yards, but whenever I have my long slides out, I always get this feeling like I wanna shoot from some distance. I'm being a real fast 125 grain. I think this would do pretty well. So I'm actually gonna take my time. I'm gonna to try to place these shots on that steel from 75 yards here. So, 40 Smith & Wesson. Ballistic performance wasn't great, but maybe it's accuracy will be. So, let's see what I can get with this. Fast. Missing now. Ah, so good at first, but after a while, not so much. Interesting. Three fifty seven mag. Yeah, I can do it this round. Even faster sounding. All right, I got a couple more rounds here. I can find them. <laughs> so overall what I'm seeing, these are fast. And both the 40 and the 357, very low recoil. Definitely some advantages here. All right, more 357. Not so good on that second round of these 357s, but overall, what I'm going to say here is the 357 overall very acceptable. Did very well on a ballistic test. A little bit under penetrating on one of those, maybe 11 and three quarters, 11 and a half. Really good accuracy overall, and that's what I look for. You know, a distance versus up close. Sometimes I can gauge around because sometimes I can hit, you know, one hole at five, six yards, but when I back it up, they're just awful. This is a little bit different where it's kind of a little bit spread out close, but longer range, they seem a little, a little bit better. Our 40 Smith & Wesson, it wasn't a bad round. Fast round, very low recoil. Um, very low recoil for how powerful it is, but 
what I'm seeing is our ballistic test. Obviously, we're getting under penetration consistently. Now, does that mean it's a bad round? No, but it makes sense being a 125 grain. That, you know, that's why some of the best loads for 40 are like 165 grain because you need a momentum. And 125 grams is just a little bit low, but with 357, 125 grain is a normal weight. Now, our sectional density is lower because it's copper, but it's, you know, you'd probably be somewhere in the vicinity of 115 grain, 110 grain for were lead, and that's still kind of in a normal range. So overall, did pretty well. So that's what you get today. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.